Hi, I'm AJ Carey with Lone Star Discs, and this is my in the bag. So we're gonna start out first with, you know, always carry my drive bag. It keeps my hands dry. This is in a waterproof bag. So drive bag, very powdery. Love it. Won't play around without it. Yes. All right. You know, always keep a towel up top as well. So let's start out with the, the butter, the putters, all right? We're going with blue bonnets. This is the Money Makers. They have nice, consistent fade. They go where I aim. I like them a lot. I put them in V2. I like the stiffness. When it gets 100 degrees, these are still gonna be nice and stiff and have great grip. They're not slick. They're very tacky. You know, they have good fade and they handle the wind. So they'll be still be in my bag when we're out there in Kansas and in the high headwinds. And they'll also make it in the bag when it's no wind in the woods. So blue bonnet, best putter there is. All right, approach disc. We're gonna go to the bull snake. Bull snake is there for when I want to throw the blue bonnet, but it's a little windy and I need something to grab the ground and it's not, not meant to go very far. So mainly backhand only, possibly a couple forehands in there. So we got the, the bull snake, great disc, and this is in V2. I prefer most of my throwing putters and putting putters in that V2 plastic. So, all right, you know, you gotta have one in the bag, the Dillo. I like the Glow Dillo, nice and soft, has good fade. It's really a point and shoot kind of disc here. I can, if I throw it on hyzer, it'll hyzer out. If I throw it on Annie, it'll hold the Annie. If I throw it flat, I mean, it's a laser beam. This is what I like to run baskets with, long throw-ins. We're gonna get a couple with these this year. So, Dillo, gotta have it. And really, let's say the hands down the best throwing putter in our lineup, the Penny, the Glow Penny, to be precise. This disc, okay, a little story behind this one is, shanked one off into the woods here, went deep in the woods. Great warehouse, like great um, production find here. This is sick. You know, whoever left it out there, well, sorry for them, it's mine now. But um, yeah, this is this is my favorite disc for those laser beams, straight, throw it on a hyzer, it flips up, throw it flat, it gets turned. And I, this thing I could probably throw it to 330, maybe 350 with a good tailwind. It goes for days and it's, it goes exactly where I, I, I aim it. So hands down my favorite. It's like pushes that mid-range slot in a way. So. Glow Penny. Now, some more approach discs. We carry two harpoons, all right, okay? Right now I'm testing out between the V1 and V2. This one is the v, V1. This one's a V2, so it's stiffer. V2 has a little more straightness into it, so it's good for lacing those tighter shots. The V1 has the meat, so, and it hits the ground, it sticks. These are both forehand only, maybe a backhand here and there, but uh, they're, they're the go-to with the wind and I need it to hit the ground and stick. So definitely recommend the Harpoon. These are hands down my favorite approach disc forehand. All right, that's it for the putters. We're gonna go next to the mid ranges. So I carry five mid ranges in the bag Depends on the course, I may bag an extra one of these, but this is my, my core. We start out first, hooligan flip. This thing is really flippy. So I'm trying this out for that shot. We'll see if it makes it, but you can't throw it on enough hyzer. It's going right. So I like it for those high turnover shots, maybe standstills. So we're working this one into the bag. Next one in stability is the Texas is the Texas Ranger. And this one in particular is in Bravo. It's more overstable. It has some fade if I put it on hyzer. It'll go straight if I throw it flat. It'll turn if I put a little tilt on it. So it's really my most point and shoot out of all the mid ranges. And the Bravo plastic is a little more overstable. If I had it, uh, I may also bag an Alpha for those flippier shots that need to stand up. So. Definitely one of my favorite mid-ranges right now. It's so point and straight, so gotta love it. And I can throw it out to like 350, 375 if a good tailwind. I love it, can't say enough great things about it. 
Next one I'm really digging on is the midi. Okay, let's go down to one of the first two molds from Lone Star. This one here, alpha, this is also alpha. The difference is this one's a little more stable. This one's a little straight. They don't flip on me, but they're more of a throw it hard and flat. I can throw it as hard as I want. It'll hold that beam straight, get a little consistent fade at the end. These are gonna be the workhorses. I think about end of season, I'm gonna have one beat up to that late flip. And then I'm gonna have, you know, maybe bagging almost four of these things. I love the way these things feel. So I definitely recommend you getting the midi. It's great, might be a good, fading mid-range for you it may be a good straight mid-range depending on your power level but can't say enough good things and look at the swirls on it so last but not least we got the walker it's it's fighting it's for the slot for my favorite disc in my bag i like it for forehand this glow is extra gummy it likes to hit the ground stick backhand i can throw it as hard as i want no flip up at all and it's always consistent fade. You know, the walker go to, definitely for them forehands. All right, let's go to the fairway drivers. So fairway drivers, we're gonna go slow speed fairway. We're gonna start it out. Mockingbird, this is for that softer touch shot, dead straight, late flip. Uh, maybe like a fan grip on deep hyzer. Uh, it's going to be go to a fairway driver in the woods where it's tight and technical. This is in Bravo, so it's a little more overstable, but it's pretty much just a point and shoot disc. I like the equivalent to the uh, Texas Ranger in a fairway driver. So definitely liking the Mockingbird. Next two, I have Lariats. Okay. This is a Bravo Lariat. This one's more flippy. I can get it to turn right more often, throw it flat, gets it right. But if I dip into the hyzer, it'll beam straight. I also have the Founders, which is more of a left finish. I can even forehand it. It has nice stability to it. If I put it on hyzer, it'll track out left. So these are great, great you know, compliments to each other. Whereas this is when I want to go right. This is when I want to go a little left. So. They work well interchangeably to each other. Next, we have the Dos X. This is, might be my favorite mid, uh, favorite fairway driver. It has nice finish. I can forehand it, I can backhand it. When they start to beat up, they'll push straight. But overall, very consistent left fade. Really digging this disc right here. So can't wait to throw, fillet some forehands with this one. All right, next we're gonna go to that higher nine speed fairway. And we got two, we carry two of those, two molds. First, we're gonna start out with the Mad Cat, okay? This one, this is my straighter Mad Cat. It has, still has finish. Don't really forehand it, but it's mainly a backhand for pushing that 400 with a little fade. This is a Alpha Mad Cat. Then I have, this is a not really sure the plastic for it. This was a woods find. Again, shanked one into the woods. Went over there, was gifted with a mystery disc, mystery Mad Cat. This one feels really nice. What I hear it was uh, ran for infinite when, this run. So this one has some more stability to it. It's good left fade, maybe even that forehand to flip up. So still working this one into its desired slot, you know, then we're talking about maybe the best nine speed in the lineup for sure to Chubacabra. All right. I have a Bravo, real flat, real gummy. This one, good pop up. Maybe goes tops out 300 to 330. It's pretty overstable, but it hits the ground sticks because that Bravo is nice and gummy. Whereas I have this Alpha and this guy, I can throw it as hard as I want in any headwind. And 3.30 at best? I mean, like, back that's backhand, full flight, this thing fades. So, it's hard to throw it very far, which makes it a great distance control disc, both forehand and backhand. And really, I can't wait to test this thing out when we get to the Kansas wind and get out west, where we, we play in the wind some more. I think uh, Vegas will be a great opportunity to bring this out, because 3.50 and in, 
I'm, you know, this is perfect. I can just throw it hard, aim at my spot, and it's getting there. All right, next one, we're, we're going to drivers. Okay, no particular order. We have the tumbleweed, okay? Put some little marks on the edge, because this is my roller disc. Forehand, backhand, doesn't matter. You know, I really, it's a quick flip disc. I put it out there nice and flat, it gets to the ground, and it just rolls, and it always flips to the flight plate. So, love it for that. May throw it on a couple backhands in the strong tailwinds, where I have to get deep into it and still get right. But overall, tumbleweed, you know, the name speaks for itself. It's a roller. You always need a roller in your bag, so tumbleweed's great for that. All right, then the next, the next four are gonna be warbirds. I prefer the alpha warbird. I like that stiff, stiffness to it, and as the, as the temperature heats up, this disc will slowly start to soften up, but it's nice and stiff, easy to grip onto. I love it. This one's a little lighter. This is 171, still overstable. It's starting to work into now getting that pop into it. So look forward to seasoning this disc in for that, you know, later in the season, you're gonna see this in my bag for that late flip shot. So loving it. Got another alpha that's in this more see-through plastic. You know, this is, this one's sick. This one's probably, it's similar to the white one. I'm still working in which, which the season for it, but it has flip up, but it still has some fade to the end of it. Really like it. It's, it's a little flatter than the rest of mine. Next is, again, this is a max weight warbird. So this is, a, this is another warbird again. This is meat hook. It's nice and pop top, has beautiful swirls on it. This one is very reliable in wind. I can throw it in a headwind. As long as I give it a little hyzer, it's not gonna flip up and get turned out of it. Throwing it in some near 20 to 25 mile an hour headwinds and it still holds up. So this is gonna be, you know, one of my biggest bombers when I finally get this thing broken into getting some pop up. And then off straight out of the wife's bag, got another Warbird. This one, one Alpha 168. It's lighter, it's got a monster dome, and it is a meat hook, and I love it. This one is, get it out there, get it on a high, high little bit of ante, it just fights its way out. This thing goes a mile. I love it, love it for the forehands because it gets up the speed a little easier. You know, definitely recommend, try some of these light warbirds. And they hold stability even in that light plastic. You know, so 168, Still be for than my 175, so worth a try for sure. I'm loving it. This is this one just so good, so good. All right, next two, they're fighting for the same kind of slot here. We're gonna go Tombstone and Alpha. This disc, pretty flat. It's very sharp. It, it does exactly what its name is. It's a tombstoning disc. It's great for that. You put it high, it's gonna stab at the ground. And it really doesn't like hit and bounce, it just hits dead. So this is for those up to 400 foot spike hyzers, you know, where I can just throw it hard to the sky, it gets left, gets down, it doesn't get dri it doesn't drift left and right in crosswinds. So I also like it for forehands. Forehands, 350 and in, it's it's good. It's it's a little straighter than the chupacabra for the forehand. So I'm able to push it a little bit longer than the tube, so it has good complements with you know this being a 13 speed, that one being a nine speed. This one goes further, gets up, gets up to faster speeds. Overall, love this disc. And the last one, Seguin. Okay, this is a new disc. You know, most of you viewers may have just seen this been released on the uh, approval list. I like to think of this, this is a Bravo. It's super overstable. I like to think of it considerably close to the, the buoy, but more overstable. It's not quite my tombstone. The tombstone has less glide. This has as much fade as the tombstone, but I can push this much further than the tombstone. But it also still has that reliable fade. I'm looking forward to throwing this disc in heavy headwinds as my max distance disc. So really look forward to it. When it comes out in alpha, your boy will have an alpha in his bag. So for right now, this Bravo is gonna do. 
So overall, we've got to all the discs. So I want to shout out the bag. This is the Discology OG bag. So very nice. Like it a lot. Carry two, got two water bottles on it. Otherwise, you know, things that I keep with me. I try to keep it light, so I don't bring a lot of extra knickknacks with me. Uh, I do keep a rangefinder in there, so uh, it's not in here right now. And uh, you know, some other things. I, uh, we always have uh, poop bags on site. Oh, what's this? This is a, this was a fine, you know, my dog Onyx. He uh, dug this up on the first hole here at headquarters yesterday. It's just a deer vertebrae. Why do I have it? Well, my dog brings me uh, treats all the time. So this is uh, the knickknack brought up by, the, by Onyx. So, you know, we keep that with them. You get a little wild, we just throw them the bone. So, hey, thanks for joining us here. I'd like to thank my uh, secondary sponsors, Zone Sporting Goods. Uh, we have Drive Bag, Discology, and of course, Lone Star Discs.